Hi guys, it's Chantelle and this is Life Sorted and thank you for stopping by today. I apologise for not having put up a video for the last two weeks. The little man got ill and he wasn't very well for about 10 days and it kind of threw everything off track. So I wasn't able to get any recording done or any editing done for this channel, which made me sad, but he is all better now. So I'm hoping that I can, from now on, we can resume normal service. Um, I do feel like I'm a little bit... My, I've lost my vlogging mojo guys. I was doing so well and I pre-recorded lots of videos and I was like really into it and then he got sick and it threw me out and I'm like <sighs> I need to get my brain back in the game. So I kind of sat down and I've brainstormed a few ideas for some new content. One of them obviously is what I'm filming today for you guys. Um, but if anybody does have any ideas of topics they would like me to cover so like mindfulness, intentional living, decluttering, happiness, I don't know, I don't know what else, just give me some ideas and I will see what I can do um, because I love this channel, I love this little community we are building slowly, I now have 370 subscribers in just on three months which I'm like super proud of, so thank you guys. Don't forget, if you do like this video, to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't yet. If you're new, hi! <laughs> we talk about kind of like all things around happiness and simple living, how to simplify your life and be happier, especially if you are a parent. There is a heavy parenting angle on most of my content. Not all of it, but most of it. So nice to have you along. But for today, we are going to be talking about 10 items that you should consider purchasing secondhand before buying them brand new. Now this is for a number of reasons. In some cases, it does save you money to buy secondhand stuff, obviously. That's kind of like the main reason I think people do it. It also means sometimes that you can get higher quality and better brand stuff at a cheaper cost. I'm not a brand snob in any way, but sadly, in a lot of cases, if you pay for a higher quality brand, a better named brand, you will get better quality product. Not always the case, but sometimes it sadly is the case. Um, supermarket pair of walking shoes compared to, you know, a £150 pair of walking shoes, the likelihood is the £150 pair are going to be better quality and they're gonna last you longer. So buying secondhand means you can sometimes get the higher quality at a price you can afford. So. You kind of got to weigh it up. And then the last reason um, for me um, and for a lot of other people is to have less waste, reduce reduce the amount of waste. I apologise if you can hear a car going past. <laughs> it's to reduce the amount of waste we put into land films. Uh, fills. Land films? That's a new one. Land films. Uh, so buying second hand means you're not purchasing new and less stuff is being thrown into landfills and it gets a second life and things like that. Plus in some cases buying second hand can also mean supporting charities if you buy from charity shops so that is also good. All around goodness. So my top places to buy second hand before I get on with the list is from charity shops, eBay, Facebook, occasionally Gumtree depending on what you're looking for and car boot sales. Those five places are the best places you're going to be able to get hold of secondhand stuff. I have just done a video over on my other channel, I'll pop the link up here, of a secondhand clothing haul that I did for Ellie and Spring Summer Wardrobe. I got nearly all of it on Facebook. Actually I think I got all of it on Facebook. I think it was all on Facebook. So from a group or groups called Next offers boys clothing or something along those lines. So the idea is mostly that it's next products but occasionally other people you can put other products on it. Um, but I find these kind of specific groups tend to be really really good for getting hold of kids clothing. I know that there's like a Scandi clothing one, um, there's a next one, there's a designer clothing one, there's a few different branded ones purely for buying kids clothing so they're really really good. So let's get on with today's video. If you do hear any random noises, I do apologise. I have the window behind you guys um, and I have got it open today because it's really warm. It's grey 
today. It's been really sunny for the last few days. It is grey today, but it's really, really warm. So the windows are all open. They're all open. Um, you also might occasionally see or hear this little person here. He's having a nap. If you guys do see him, he's just had his hair clipped and he looks a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> we cut him back for the summer because he gets so hot. Um, but he looks a little bit silly with all of his hair trimmed off. But you might occasionally see him pop up in the background. <laughs> so today we're talking about 10 different, like, different types of items you should look for second hand. And the first one is clothes, like I just said. Um, so not just clothes for kids though, clothes for adults as well. Buying secondhand clothing is a great money saver and it does, like I said, means you can get quality items at a cheaper cost. When I was a student up in Cardiff, the road that I lived on had like eight charity shops. Um, so I bought like the majority of my clothing from charity shops. It also meant that I kind of got items that um, weren't on the high street at that point in time. Um, which meant that I wasn't wearing the same stuff as everybody else. So you could still find stuff that was like on trend because trends are always cyclical anyway. So if there was like a lot of polka dots at the moment, you will find polka dot stuff in the charity shops. Um, but you'll have stuff that other people won't have. So I always loved that kind of aspect. And I also wore a lot of vintage. So that was always, always great in charity shops as you could pick up vintage stuff. I might actually close the window because there is a bird right outside. But I'm not sure if you guys can hear. <laughs> Window closed, let's get you back. So yeah, charity shops are great for clothing and I wore a lot of secondhand clothing um, and I also bought a lot on eBay. Sadly, charity shops and eBay are starting to increase in value, which is a little bit annoying, but it's still cheaper than brand new in a lot of cases. So number two would be toys. If you've got little ones, the likelihood is, is that they go through toys fairly quickly. Um, they kind of either grow out of them or they get bored of them. Um, so yeah, moving moving on to new toys can be a pretty rapid thing and with the price of like character stuff or branded stuff or wooden toys, if you're like us and you're into wooden toys, they're really expensive. Character toys is scary how expensive they are but children grow out of character toys quite quickly. So if they're into Paw Patrol now, the likelihood is in nine months time there'll be a new cartoon and they won't be into it. But some kids that are younger than them will be into it. So buying secondhand toys and games is a really good idea. And that also goes for older kids as well. Things like games consoles or um, the actual games for games consoles, they can be super expensive. Um, I was never into games as a kid. It wasn't really my thing, but obviously John, when um, we were together, was into his games console. And the fact that games for like the Xboxes were like, 40, 50, 60 pounds just like flabbergasted me. Um, but he did buy a lot second hand, luckily. You can usually find them second hand again online or on Facebook selling groups or uh, in places like Game and CEX. Great places for picking up games, console games. So that might be an option. The next one, again, if you are a parent or you're expecting a little one, baby items. Baby stuff like changing tables and baths and Moses baskets and carts and push chairs and prams. There seems to be a lot of stuff you need when you've got a baby. And they are all quite expensive. Um, so it is perfectly, you know, perfectly normal to pick them up second hand in a lot of cases. I know if it's your first baby, quite often you want everything new. You want brand new stuff because it's a new baby and yay. Um, but in all honesty, I was lucky and we got we got to borrow items off a friend or we got gifted items from a friend that was second hand and it did save a fair whack. Um, if you have seen over on our other channel, again, I shall pop a link up here, um, El uh, we moved Elian into a toddler bed, but I didn't buy a toddler bed. Luckily, my friend uh, gave us hers because her two boys had now grown out of it. So I had that for free and that's probably saved me you know, a good £100 or something from buying a toddler bed. Um, so buying second-hand stuff for babies is a great idea. B 
baby baths and Moses baskets especially just put a new mattress in it and make sure it's nice and clean and you're all good it's it's really not worth the cost of like 40 50 pound for a Moses basket which they'll probably if you're lucky they'll sleep in it at all and if you're lucky you might get 10 weeks out of it it just seems like such a waste of money to spend 40 or 50 pound on it the next thing is a proper big money item which is a car cars are super expensive at the moment even small cars buying a brand new car is expensive and obviously if you want a good brand safe car it's it's going to cost you a fair whack of money um, so buying a second hand car is a much much better idea it's much more financially viable once you buy a new car the minute you drive it off the forecourt or it gets delivered it reduces in value hugely so buying a second hand car is a far far better financial investment and you can pick them up when they're only a year old or even less than that in some cases with good mileage just make sure that they've obviously got their MOTs and services so you know that it's a safe car and give it a check over take a mechanic with you if you can if you don't really know much about cars or a member of the family who does know about cars just give it a good check over to make sure that it's in good nick and then Bob's your uncle you've got a much much cheaper car all of our my first car was brand new but it was it was oh gosh many many years ago when it wasn't so expensive to buy a new car but both of our cars since have been second hand and um they run great we put money into keeping them maintained and things but they do run great so second hand cars again there are so many places you can buy second hand cars um just obviously check that they are running well and then you're all good the next thing i would suggest would be kitchen gadgets now um, I am all for reducing the amount of stuff you have in your kitchen. You will have seen our kitchen minimalism videos. We have reduced what we keep there hugely and you don't need a lot of kitchen gadgets. So one of the main things is that people buy kitchen gadgets because they think they're going to use it but then they don't and they end up selling it on um, which means you can get almost brand new kitchen gadgets at a cheaper cost. So if you genuinely do need something or use something or want something um, you can quite often get higher brand items um, at a greatly reduced cost. So um, I really, really wanted a slow cooker when we were up in uni, but we didn't want to spend £60 on a good quality slow cooker. Instead, I went to Cash Generator and I paid £15 for a £60 um, slow cooker and we have used it so much and I still have it. And it's been, oh god, I don't know, maybe eight years? Oh wait, it's got to be more than that. Uh, 11 years. I've been married eight. I was in uni before that, so maybe 11 or 12 years. I still have that same slow cooker. And it has, we've used it so much. <laughs> it has done as well. So kitchen gadgets are something that, again, if you're going to use it, don't just buy it because you found it cheap. Um, if you're going to use it and you think you need it, or you want to upgrade um, the size capacity on something you already have or the quality of something you already have, going second hand on kitchen gadgets is definitely the way to go. And then the same goes for household electronic items. So TVs, stereos, speakers, even things like lamps and Yehuva and um, maybe like heaters or air conditioning things. Um, going second hand on those is a good idea. Again, it means you can get the higher brand items at a lower cost. <coughs> Sorry. Um, we have lots of household items which we have bought second hand. John's stereos and speakers. Um, quite a few of them have come second hand from eBay. He does troll looking for specific brand stuff. And then also on the flip side, um, in the last few months he has decided to sell a number of his items. And they have been sold on now on eBay as well. Um, a little tip for you guys for buying household electrics is to buy reconditioned items or refurbished items or returned items. Now some people kind of stray away from these thinking that they're faulty but if you are buying these items from the manufacturers or you know the company that makes them um, they won't be faulty. They will be perfectly fixed and perfect in perfect condition um, they might have the odd scratch or something on them, um, but they will be fully working and they will usually come with a warranty just in case. Um, 
our big one is we bought our Dyson stick hoover and we have one of those oval shaped Dyson heaters and coolers that we use in our studio to heat it up in the winter when we have newborns in there and then we use it as an air conditioning unit to cool it down in there or fan to cool it down in there in the summer and we got both of them on Dyson's own reconditioned eBay store so check eBay for branded stores of their reconditioned and returned items because uh, we got them I think they were probably close to like 40 or 50 percent off retail value and they're perfect there's nothing wrong with them they both came with warranties for up to a year I think or six months something like that um, just in case there was a problem but they're, they're perfect and we've had both now for well over two years and they both work amazingly so that is definitely a little hint a little tip to go check out Next is quality furniture items. If you want um, a chest of drawers or a wardrobe or a bed frame or a sofa even in some cases, you can quite often get some real bargains when it comes to furniture because they are big and they're bulky and as long as you can move them yourself, that can sometimes be the only issue, if you can move them yourself, people just need them out of their house. They need them out of their space so they will sell them a lot cheaper than their value. So we've picked up so many pieces over the years when we were living um, in Cardiff as students and like after being a student we were living there. Um, we furnished our, our flats and everything with a lot of secondhand furniture items. Um, my dining table downstairs at the moment is a secondhand piece. Um, my chest of drawers, my teal one that you might have seen occasionally in videos, that is a secondhand piece. So look out for them because you can pick them up especially if you want like um, like Ikea Calyx units and things like that. People quite often sell those and they're in perfect good condition. It's even better if you plan on painting them because then it doesn't actually matter if they're in perfect condition because you can just paint them, which is what we did with our dining table. And my sideboard, my sideboard, if you've seen it, um, it's in the video when I decluttered the dining room, so I'll pop it up here. Um, my sideboard is vintage. It's genuine vintage, so obviously it's second hand. It's probably fourth, fifth or sixth hand actually, because it's probably been through multiple people. Um, but to buy quality pieces of furniture, if I'd wanted a sideboard that big, made of solid wood, to the quality that is made of, it's a G plan fresco, in case you want to know. Um, to purchase that now, the cost would be astronomical, I dread to think. If it was on made.com, I'd probably be looking at like seven, eight hundred, nine hundred pound, whereas I paid a hundred and fifty for it. And we went and picked it up with um John's dad's van from Swansea. And I love it. And I've been looking for another one to go the other side of the room. Just a slightly different shape. So yeah, quality furniture, quality costs money, so just keep an eye out for it if you uh if you really want something. Next is one that's pretty obvious to me, books. Um we got as you might have seen, I got rid of a lot of my books, pretty much all of my books. <laughs> all of the ones I've read, I got rid of, so they went to the charity shop. Um, but I either get my books from the library these days, I very rarely buy a book, um, like brand new. <clears throat> I will usually go to the charity shops and pick up books secondhand, because usually they're a pound, or two pound if they're a hardback or something. Charity shops or car boot sales, are great for secondhand books and they don't have to cost you a fortune. You can pick up so many books. Yeah, you might not be able to find a specific book. So if you really, really want a specific book, your library is your best bet. But if you're just generally looking for a book, if it's a popular author, you might get lucky and you might find the exact one you want or you'll find something else by that author. So I quite often get lucky and I can pick up Terry Pratchett's. You usually find Terry Pratchett's in charity shops or, um, any sort of like crime fiction, you'll usually find those quite often in charity shops. So books are easy, easy secondhand items. And the same goes for DVDs. As you will know, we have decided to get rid of all of ours. Um, apart from a very select few of Blu-rays, we have gotten rid of over 700 DVDs, which is shocking. Um, so yeah, obviously we sold them on. We sold them on to... Um, Zapper in the end I think was the app. Zapper and Ziffit. Um, I think we sent parcels to both of those because they gave good money for us. Um, so they will be selling them on through 
I got a feeling it's like a CEX or a That's Entertainment or something like that gets their stock. Um, so yeah, picking up DVDs second hand is definitely the way to go. Most of our collection, if you'd ever seen it, which was ridiculously huge, um, it all all came second hand to us um, from uh, Cash Generator. Cash Generator up in Cardiff where we were, were 15 for £15. Pound. So that is how we had that ridiculous collection. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, getting DVDs second hand from a multitude of places if you really, really want one. It's almost cheaper than renting them from uh, like either on your TV or up to Blockbuster still exist elsewhere in the UK? I don't think they do. From a video shop anyway. It's cheaper to buy a DVD second hand than it is to rent one. Which is crazy. But obviously if you don't want to clutter enough room, you can buy it and then take it to a charity shop or buy it and give it to somebody else. But yeah, second hand is the way to go. Lastly is quite a specific one, but sports equipment. Now obviously I'm, I'm not a sports equipment kind of person, but um, there was a time when John was. John was a downhill biker, he loved downhill biking, but buying a bike second hand was definitely the way to go because mountain bikes are super expensive. <laughs> so any sort of large scale sports equipment, obviously you're not going to go buy a football second hand because it's really not worth it. Um, but things like bikes, road or mountain, Biking gear as well, like um, any sort of like body armor kind of thing, can be really expensive if you are downhilling. Um, golf clubs, skis, surfboards, um, snowboards, any kind of like big scale sporting equipment, it is worth buying it second hand. Um, you will find lots of it online because it can be really, really expensive unless you are very, very involved in the sport. Um, and obviously you want the best equipment and you want it new then buying it second hand is the way to go. I did archery as a kid for about three years um, but I bought my bow uh, second hand because my parents really didn't want to fork out like 300 400 pounds for a bow when the likelihood is I would probably give up the hobby within a year or two. Um, so yeah buying it second hand was the best way to go and I think we spent like 120 maybe on my bow and uh, my arrows and the only things that I bought new were my safety equipment so um, my, my arm guard and my chest guard were the only pieces that we bought new because safety equipment is better to go new I suppose. Everything else was bought second hand. So guys that is the 10 things that you should consider buying second hand before you look at buying them new simply to save money, produce less waste and get better quality items at a cheaper cost. So it is great for all the family if you can purchase things second hand because there's stuff that is for everybody in the family in that list. If you like this video please do give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe, leave me some comments and tell me what other topics you would like me to cover and I will see what I can do and I will see you guys again next week. Bye!